So I've got two, two Phillips pulse generators now, and uh, I'm not too crazy about this one. It's kind of big and heavy. I like the other one. It's kind of cute. So I thought I'd get, I would get rid of this one, so I turned it on, and it's not working. So it seems as though it worked in the past. Um, I think I did a video on this once, and it seems like it worked fine, but maybe it was getting sick. I don't know. So I opened it up. So let's take a look inside. All right, so this board, I uh, took out four screws and it comes out. I can le lever it up here. But uh, yeah, these two capacitors look really, really bad. The, the ends are, are popping out. So um, he looks like he needs a recap. I don't know if this is the cause of the problem, but uh, definitely don't want, to, uh, don't want to send it out with these caps in there. So there's some other, who? There's some other electrolytics elsewhere, like this big, big jobbers, but I think those ones are okay. Um, but these just look too sick to leave in there, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of these. All right, I lifted just one leg out of the board here, so these capacitors are, I'm able to test them. And uh, this one, let's see here, let's uh, get out of this mode here. Uh, turn it on and off. Uh, so he's testing 283 microfarads, and if I check the ESR, it's 0.2 ohm. So that one seems fine. Let's uh, let's check this one out. Point 0.3 ohms, and um, let's see here. Two hundred sixty-five, and yeah, let's check this one over here. I'll be shocked that if these are all good because they look really, really bad. Uh, Two hundred eighty-seven microfarads, and let's see, uh, point two ohms. Yeah, so these capacitors actually maze are just fine. They look like hell. Um, so they might be on their last legs, but they definitely are still in spec. So that's pretty amazing. But while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and change them. All right. I've replaced all the uh, capacitors on this board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Eight capacitors there. And the power supplies are very stable now. Uh, everything looks good. People might uh, be wondering about uh, these big giant ones. I actually uh, tested both of those and they seem just fine. So no need to uh, worry about those. Uh, seems to be working okay now. So I think what I'll do is I'll just bundle this up and, uh, and give it away. Um, I like the 50 megahertz version better than this one, um, just because it's compact size and weight and everything. This one's really heavy. The transformer, and let me turn this thing off, take the power supply out of it so I don't zap myself. Oh, God. So, give you maybe a better tour of this thing. Uh, so, this giant capa uh, transformer in here, and uh, super, super heavy. Um, Inside, we've got some really nice uh, capacitors on all the range switching and stuff. Uh, all film capacitors. Those look really, really good. Um, this transformer has a really cool trick to it. Oh, God. It's going to be hard to film. So, when I was looking at the schematic here, um, the interesting, interesting thing about the schematic is... Um, the AC comes in here and goes into the transformer, and then there are two fuses on that board that I just showed you. And the two fuses are actually on the secondary side, not the primary side. There's no fuse on the primary side, uh, which didn't seem very safe to me. And then there's this weird thing here that's THF, okay? The THF, I'm going to have to move you guys. All right, so you see this white thing here and this 
spring and it goes over this little thing here and it's actually on the transformer it's actually buried inside the transformer in fact it's a really weird it's a really weird thing uh, this is a thermal fuse so if that transformer starts to get hot this thing melts and it shuts off the ac to it so i don't know if you can replace these <laughs> Maybe it maybe it's designed that hey if if this thing ever blows your transformer's dead so don't worry about it um, but but yeah it's a really weird really really weird design uh, let me show you a little bit more since I've got the covers off this thing uh, so this is the main timing board lots of big resistors on it probably should replace these caps down here but it seems to be working okay I'll let somebody else do that uh, I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to give it away in a really bad state. It's an okay state right now. Uh, and uh, I, already showed you, I already showed you this side. Uh, this is the power supply. Um, let's see. And then there's the other side. Flip it around. And there's this side, which is the output stage, I guess. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, there were a couple dodgy looking caps on this board. And I, I replaced those. So I replaced one, two, three, four. So I've replaced all the caps on this. No, four, here's another one here. One, two, three, four, five. I've replaced all the caps on this board because because there was a couple that looked super dodgy. You know, I went to test them and they all test okay. Every single cap in this thing has tested okay, um, but look super, super, super dodgy. <laughs> uh, here's a... Here's an example. Can you see, I'll move it over here so you can see it better. But yeah, the end cap has got goo coming out and it's discolored and it's bulgy. Uh, yeah, that one just looks super bad. Here's another one, looks super bad. Um, now, did they all look super bad from day one? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> anyway, they all look dodgy to me, so I, I got rid of them. All right, so let me, uh, let me put the covers on this thing. Um, oh. Okay, I guess this one goes up here. All right, where does it hook in? Hooks in like this. All right. These things are always... You have to learn the secrets. Like one of those Japanese puzzle boxes. God, I love those things. I used to have quite a few of them. And there's a screw in the back. Need to find some screw to put in. When I was a kid, I had a family member who lived in San Francisco, and we would go visit Uncle Uncle So and So, and Uncle So and So, like I said, lived in San Francisco. So we would go to the San Francisco Zoo because I was a kid, and uh, they have a uh, they have Japanese garden there. I guess this goes on. This, where does this, how does this go on? They have a Japanese garden there. Oh, I see. And uh, they had a gift shop and they had some Japanesey things. And one of those lacquered uh, Japanese puzzle boxes. They're, they're inlaid wood. They're really nice. To get a good one, it's really nice. I got a 21 move, there's a name for them. I'm sure my Japanese viewers will tell me what they are. Um, there's a name for those boxes and they, the one I had was a 21, 21 move, 21 move box. And it's a good one. Oh, that's tourist trade. They, they, they make collectibles, which are hundreds of dollars. But. This one's okay. Interesting. Hmm. 
quite a few interesting wood woodworking items from Japan. My dad was really into woodworking, so I kind of paid attention to it. But you can even get really cool wooden combs. They were they're kind of interesting. I think I'll fold that down there. All right, there we go. All set for a new owner. <laughs>